Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we celebrate the life of David Carpenter, a parishioner of St. Anselm for many years and a missionary disciple here. 
So we're ready to begin. We will not have remarks. We'll only have the reading of the obituary at the end because somebody's got to make an airline thing at one o'clock and that's a member of the family. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. David was a lifelong Catholic, and uh, we all know what the cross means in the life of Jesus Christ. So we begin signing ourselves in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm going to ask uh, Lawrence and Leslie to come forward just to do a simple, simple thing. This is uh, the funeral pall that we use for urns. Unfortunately, we do not have the remains of, of David Carpenter yet. So um, I'm just going to ask them to lay it out on this table in the middle with the cross. Both of you, it just opens up and it's in the thing of a cross. And you put the cross like that. Yeah, that's good. You got it. So right there in line with the cross. Recently, David asked me for a Christian prayer book, and this is all the liturgy of the hours that religious and priests and lay people celebrate every day. So uh, it's a symbol of his life. So I'm asking Lawrence to lay it right here, right here. And then David was instrumental in uh, getting Bible study going and Bible sharing between St. Anselm and St. Elizabeth Parish. And these are the Bibles we use, and this is the Bible from his apartment. So we ask to put it right here. Okay. And in the waters of baptism,
In the waters of baptism, David died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And we bless these items in the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we also bless you, Lawrence and Leslie. Thank you. David loved good liturgy. He loved gospel music, but he also loved the uh, traditional liturgy of the parish. Not, I wouldn't say it's ultra conservative. He liked middle of the road. He served around the altar many years here until his health wouldn't permit him to do it. So, so we're honoring him today the way he honored us with his life. Let us pray. Most faithful God, lively is the courage of those who hope in you. Your servant David suffered greatly, but placed his trust in your mercy. Confident that the petition of those who mourn pierces the clouds and finds an answer, we beg you, give rest to David. Do not remember any of his sins, but look upon his sufferings and grant him refreshment, light, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to invite Carly White to come forward to pray the first reading of scripture for us. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I know my uncle's looking down and smiling at all of us. Um, so a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls, are, the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought of an affliction and they're going forth from us, utter destruction, but they are in peace. For before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be great, greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in, in the furnace, he provided them, or proved them, excuse me, um, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trusted him shall understand truth, and the faithful, faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy were with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Carly is David's niece his sister, Leslie Wyke's daughter. Lord, in my life and my son the Lord is my life and my salvation. 
good friend of David and a parishioner of St. Anselm Parish. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, the hour has come for me to be sacrificed. The time is here for me to leave this life. I have done my best in the race. I have run the full distance and I have kept the faith. And now there is waiting for me the prize of victory awarded for a righteous life. The prize which the Lord the righteous judge will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who wait with love for God to appear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, and he went up to the mountain, and after he had sat down, 
his disciples came to him. And he began to teach them, saying, Blessed, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the kind and clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm very sad, and I know I shouldn't, because a self-proclaimed man of faith, I trust and I can say without hesitation that David is already in heaven. David is my teacher, probably one of the greatest, and I say is because he will continue with me every time I step on an altar of any church. I was his student, and this temple was my classroom. He taught me about liturgy, but he especially taught me about kindness, patience, and love. I'm Father Robert Kelly. I normally go by Father Bob Kelly. Uh, and I've been pastor here at St. Anselm's for, uh, since January of 2018. But I moved in here in January of 2017. And uh, it was January 15th. And um, the first Sunday Mass I was at, David was serving with Trish and Dorothy Dunbar, and uh, Father Mark was out in Indiana that day, and Father Abelardo had the Mass. And that was in January of 2017. But David was here, and I came in the church, I think I was celebrating the Mass, and he said, hello, Father, how are you? And he said, my name's David Carpenter, and I help out here, and I take care of the sacristy. And we met. And it was the start of a good friendship. A very good friendship. But everyone sitting in this church knows what I'm speaking about. 
His family knows that above all. But if you're a cousin or you're a parishioner or whatever, you knew David from the moment he talked to you and he became your friend. He never tossed anyone aside. Even if he didn't agree with everything you said, he never tossed you aside. And he wanted people to come back to church all the time. He said, I'm going to get Dwight Hearns to come for Ash Wednesday. I'm going to get Phyllis Shackelford to come. And Phyllis and Dwight were there Ash Wednesday. What we're talking about is a missionary disciple who loved this church, who loved Jesus Christ, who loved his faith, who loved his family. That's the person we're talking about today. And when the reading says from the book of wisdom, the souls are in, the souls of the just are in the hand of God and no torment shall touch them ever again. And we know the last three years of David's life has been a journey of ups and downs in his health. Just last summer, he had a heart valve replacement. But that's just one of the stories. Right after Father Abelardo was leaving here, Bishop Perry celebrated the Mass here in December of 2017. And he said to me, David said, do you think Bishop Perry would be willing to give me a blessing? I'm having heart surgery the first week of January. And Father Abelardo came in and he said, of course I'll give you a blessing and I'll give you a blessing and so will Father Bob give you a blessing. And Bishop Perry anointed him right then and there. And he made it with flying colors through that surgery. And David said, do you think he would bless? I said, of course he will. And I said to Bishop Perry, so would you be, oh, no problem, no problem. As for me, the hour has come for me to be sacrificed. The time is here for me to leave this life. I have done my best in the race. I have run the full distance and I have kept the faith. We know that's true to his life. A just man is with God today. He's with Jesus Christ. God the Father and the Holy Spirit. I chose, I chose the reading from the Gospel of Matthew for David's funeral mass today because David was always concerned that we had a beautiful memorial altar every November in memory of all those who died and passed away. He said, the first year he said to me, he said, can we get a table and set it up there and maybe put the Paschal candle? I said, yes, yes we can. Yes, we can. And he wanted to put on that table all the programs of the people who had died that past year. All the programs of the people who had died the past year. This one is the first funeral David and I celebrated together. This is the first funeral. Alberta Robinson Williams. It actually didn't take place in the church. We went to the funeral home and he said, the family wants a mass, is that okay with you? I said, of course it is. We'll do the mass in the funeral home and that's just what we did. 60, 62nd and Ashland Avenue.
And I'm putting these out here because these are all the funerals that David and I did together just in that first year. I can't put them all here because there were 12 of them between the two parishes. For Black History Month, he said, we don't have pictures of all these people, but I'm gonna print them off the internet and we're gonna put up a display over there. And we got for Black History Month in February every year. And so this year, uh, Jerace and Sister Julita did it because David was unable to, but he laid all these pictures around the altar of all the famous black Catholic people. And there's many of them. Bishop Perry is one of them. He's the one who anointed David. Then we had uh, Frederick Douglass. So he picked all different kind of people that were special in the eyes of the church. You'll recognize them all. But this is just some of the things that David did as a missionary disciple. It's kind of a show of a tell of his life here at St. Catholic, St. Anselm Church and St. Elizabeth Church. He did it, whatever he did here, he did down there. He would work with Shirley McKinney or Deborah Cause and get it going. He didn't hesitate. Our first black Catholic or black history celebration was at St. Elizabeth. So that's the first time we did it. It was a joint parish mass between both parishes. When we were talking about starting Bible study, he said, could we do that? And we'll do it one, one week at St. Anselm, one week at, at St. Elizabeth. I said, David, let's find a neutral place. I said, four, four parishioners live in Good Shepherd Tower. And I said, it's kind of the middle meeting point for St. Elizabeth's and St. Anselm's. And doing that was a wonderful thing. And he was instrumental. And he said, uh, would you like to do it? Or is there someone else you know? I said, I know somebody. Father Tracy O'Sullivan. And we came together once a week on Wednesdays at 12 noon. And we were finished by 1.30 because the last half hour was a little eating, which David loved. And people would bring things. This is all pre-COVID. This was another Bible from his apartment. This is the Christian prayer book, and that's the Bible we used for Bible study. Just in the last months, I went to anoint him at his apartment, and he said, Father, I'm sure you need gloves for the church. Here. Here's gloves for the church, just take them. Just take them. We went to his favorite store. If you're from Chicago, you know the famous store, it's now called Macy's. It was called Marshall Fields but we called Watra's religious goods, Marshall Fields. He said, Father, whenever we go there, I feel like I'm going to Marshall Fields. 
I'm not kidding. That's what he said. So these are some of the things we bought at Marshall Fields. Biblical pronunciations updated. Could we get this, Father? Everybody should have one who reads at Mass. I said, fine. That's great. Then in January, he said, my Christmas gift is late, but here's my Christmas gift for you, Father. You'll love it. It'll clean your glasses, and you need to do that with wearing a mask. <laughs> He gave it to me in January. He said, I meant to give it to you before Christmas, but I couldn't do it. It's called Whoosh Tech Hygiene. <laughs> Once we were there, and he said, Father, I'd like to get a Pix. He said, will you go with me to watch us to get a Pix? I said, yes. I said, so we bought a Pix. I think Alex has it now. It's in a black pouch. But anyway, these are, this is like a Pix. But we bought one that day. And he said, I'm going to pay for it, Father. I'm going to pay for it. I said, that's OK. I said, if you're giving communion to people, the church can pay for that. And, I, and we put it on the church bill. Then, four weeks ago, when I was in his, in his apartment, he gave me another gift. He said, Father, you take this. You'll need it. Biological odor eliminator. <laughs> I'm not telling, oh, I'm only speaking the truth. This is the truth. St. Patrick's Day a year ago, we were in the pandemic, but it was probably the St. Patrick's Day before that. He may have given it to me last July. It doesn't matter. He gave me a little leprechaun. Oh, this was for St. Patrick's Day, but I never got it to you because we closed down March 13th. So he gave me that. This is his personal book. I don't know where he got it from. In Conversation with God, Daily Meditations by Francis Fernandez. This is his. So we know what kind of a faith-filled person David was. His family knows that. And most of the church people know that, too. Doesn't matter whether it's about gloves, Marshall Fields, Watra. Tickets. Taste testing food for my installation. He did. And so did you, Alice. You were there, too. And so was Regina. We went to taste test the food that they were going to serve at my installation. Guess who made up the invitation for the installation? David made up the invitation. Guess who made up the program? For the first Palm Sunday, I was pastor. Blessing of the Palms with our sister church, St. Edmund's Anglican Episcopal across the street, and our joint church, St. Elizabeth, where I pastor both churches. So this was the first thing he did, first program. This is my installation program, which was a month later. This was for our multicultural mass. The first year I lived here, one June I came downstairs, I wasn't pastor, and David was there with Florine Brown. David was there, 
and they were stuffing envelopes full of tickets for our t Taste of St. Anselm, which was followed by, it, it followed our multicultural mass. Florine, you and I were sitting in that rectory office with him, stuffing those, and he brought you along to get you involved, and you loved it. And Lisa was there too. Lisa was there while we were stuffing those in. The next year, I really got involved in stuffing along with them. That's another thing of his multicultural mass flyer, which we sent out to all the parishes around us. Beautiful creations. And then that year, Father Abelardo Gabriel's father died. Father was on sabbatical. And um, when he came back, we made a program for Father Abelardo's Father's Mass here at St. Anselm's. This just shows you some of the creativity that was inside this man. And he was in his 60s and 70s when he met me. And this final thing is what he did for the National Black Catholic Men's Conference last October. He made this as an ad for the National Black Conference, Men's Conference, National Black Catholic Men's Conference. He made this and he attended it online because we couldn't do it in purpose. So I'm just setting this here People can look at it after Mass. But it didn't matter if it was about gloves, programs, tickets, mailing, mailing tickets, taste testing food, going to Watras known as Marshall Fields. It didn't matter because he was also involved right up in the pandemic. The Wednesday after everything shut down, he got on the phone to me with Tina Carter, and we started the weekly Bible sharing Fridays from 1 to 2 p.m. It was called a spiritual check-in and a weekly Bible sharing, and it's still going on. This is all that he has done. This missionary disciple of Jesus Christ. This is how he made a difference here at St. Anselm, but he continued it at St. Elizabeth for the last three and a half years. And he also did it at Good Shepherd Tower. He got to know the security guard so well and found out that he was Catholic and every week he said, do you have a donation to the church this week? And he'd bring me the donation to the church. The guard, the last time I was there, he said, Father, here's the donation for the church from me. This is what we call missionary discipleship. This is what Pope Francis speaks about all the time. Missionary discipleship. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And he was a peacemaker. He was a peacemaker. If he had a disagreement to you, he didn't go around your back speaking about you either. You never knew it. The Beatitudes. They're a guide for Christian living. And that was David Carpenter. Amen. Alleluia.
he always loved little water holy bottles. Can we get some holy water bottles, Father? At this time, we're going to do the prayer of the faithful, which is going to be prayed for us by Alice Thompson, a parishioner of St. Anselm's and a good friend of David and a very good cook and an excellent chef, trained chef. And she is going to pray the prayers for us, and I'm going to do the opening prayer. Please stand. With hope in the resurrection of Christ and with deep sorrow in the loss of one we love, let us call on God, the source of all kindness and comfort. Our response will be risen Savior, lift us up. For David, who is in baptism, was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints. Let us pray to the Lord. For his sister, Leslie Weish, and for the family and friends of our brother David, that they may be enabled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, lift us up. That the firm hope of the resurrection fill the heart of every member of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, lift us up. That David and all who have died today will enjoy the vision of God with those in heaven, that all family members and friends of David experience the strength of our faith in the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, lift us up. For all people who mourn, find consolation and peace in God and those around them. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, lift us up. God, in loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son has risen from the dead and our hope that your servant David will also rise again. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Savior, lift us up. O oh God, we affirm our faith and our hope in the resurrection of your Son. Comforted by your grace and your promise of eternal life, we offer you our prayers on this day through Christ our Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now, now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious 
us did that grace appear and grace will lead me Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant David may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Bless it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection. You have set us, you have set us free. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and our Episcopal Vicar, Bishop Joseph and Perry, and all the ministers of your gospel. Remember your servant, David Carpenter, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also all our brothers and sisters and all the deceased members of the Carpenter and White families who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Anselm of Canterbury, Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, Saint Ambrose, Corpus Christi, and all holy angels of God, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Gathering our prayers and praises into one, will pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our 
earth which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here and throughout the world, and the church praying with us online today on Facebook. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace behold the Lamb of God behold him who takes away the sins of the world Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. you're coming to communion or up for a blessing please follow the directions of the altar of the ushers and please follow the arrows uh, once you receive communion we request that you step to an x lower your mask consume communion 
Raise your mats back up and go back to your seat following the X. There'll be two communion ministers, one on this side, one on this side. And whether you're Catholic or Christian or any faith, you come forward. If you don't receive the host, you cross your hands on your chest for a blessing. drink this cup we worship you as we eat this bread we honor you and we offer you our lives as you have offered your for us we remember all you've done for us we remember your covenant with us we remember and worship you Oh, Lord, as we drink this cup, we worship you. As we eat this bread, we honor you, and we offer you our lives as you have offered yours for us. We remember all you've done for us. We remember your covenant for us. We remember all you've done for us. We remember your sacrifice for us. And we remember all you've done for us. We remember all you've given us and we offer you our lives as you have offered yours for us we remember all you've done for us and we Remember your sacrifice for us, and we worship you, O Lord, in this place. Please remain seated. 
O oh God, you are water for our thirst and manna in our desert. We praise you for the life of David Carpenter and bless your mercy that has brought his suffering to an end. Now we beg that same endless mercy to raise him to new life. Nourished by the food and drink of heaven, may he rest forever in the joy of our Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would like it's Harold is going to read the obituary. Is uh, Reverend Harold? Or no? It's I guess it's here. No, it's it's changed a little bit. Okay. It's right here. And then followed by remarks by Reverend Harold. David Michael Carpenter was the oldest of two born to Mary Flippin Carpenter and Samuel Carpenter. Born December 21st, 1948, David was a Christmas gift to both parents. David attended St. Colobanus Church, an elementary school in Chicago, Illinois, and later, after the death of his mother, moved to New Jersey, where he attended Briel Elementary School and Manasquan High School. He later returned to Chicago and pursued his career. David was a devout Catholic and participated in church activities and regularly attended services at St. Anselm's Roman Catholic Church here in Chicago. His love for travel was evident in his job selections. David worked as a reservationist for Delta Airlines for many years and later served as the travel agent for Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And his love for travel took him to Africa, Italy, Spain, and a plethora of Caribbean islands. Although his illness kept him from traveling in his latter years, David still served as an armchair travel agent for family and friends. And his greatest love, however, was for his family. When he couldn't travel to visit, David kept in contact with family through FaceTime, Facebook, text, and telephone calls. Every day, you could look forward to something, some form of a message from David. He expressed his love on a daily basis. He will be sorely missed. Mourning his passing are his sister Leslie Ann, niece Carly, and a multitude of friends and family and cousins. At this time, I would like to invite Reverend Harold Lowry, a member of David's family, to give remarks.
truly giving reference to God, to Father Bob and all clergy present. My remarks has to do with the heart of a man. That was David. David, David Carpenter was a good man with a big heart and it was evident by the lives he touched. Anyone that met him had nothing but good things to say about him. He was a family man who loved his family, always trying to help make their load lighter. He loved to smile and was truly happy. He was a funny guy. He was the type of person that you can count on. If he said he was going to do it, he did it. So now family, we must keep a tender heart and not forget that God is the one that brings peace and comfort. As our bodies age and the world still moves at reckless speed, don't forget the promises that this is not all there is. As Jesus was resurrected, so would be all the saints of God. And David believed that to be so. In reflections, I'm reminded of a discussion Jesus had with his disciples in anticipation of his death and, and records this promised gift. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you should be also. So you see, family, this is not just a service. This is a transition from labor to reward. So rest in peace, my cousin and my friend. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite Regina Cook, the president of the Parish Council of St. Anselm, to come forward to uh, read the resolution from St. Anselm Parish family. Regina Cook is the president of the Parish Council. She is also a good, dear friend of David. First, I'd like to say that me and David were close to friends, and we don't know how it happened, but we talked every day. If a day went by and I didn't reach out to him, he would reach out to me. And one day we were trying to figure out how did we come to this, you know. But it was a friendship that I would cherish for a long time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I missed David's last phone call because I was being released from the hospital and my phone rang. But I was being discharged and then when I called him back, he did not answer. So... I just know that he is in a better place. And even being a member of the parish council, David could be in the hospital, but in these last days, this last year, we've had all our meetings online. David was never too sick, even though I felt he should not. He would log on for the meetings. So he was very dedicated to St. Anselm and to the end. Resolution for David Carpenter. For now, I am ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not to me only, 
but unto all them also that love his appearing. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 8. In his own way and for his purpose, God had reached down into our garden to pluck one of our fairest flowers. He called the spirit of your brother, uncle, and cousin, David, home to be with him throughout eternity. Where's Father Robert Kelly, the members of St. Anselm and St. Elizabeth Catholic Church, desire to express our love and respect to our beloved David's family. One writer has said, one generation succeeds another as waves follow waves. And therefore, it is that though we mourn the passing of one who has been loving and kind, there remains, remains another generation to succeed him, to follow the prince he has made upon the sands of time. But why should death be mourned when it is followed by immortality? It is our hope that those who are left behind will catch the aroma of the not too fleeting winds as they carry his message of work, for the night is coming. Without turning back to bid farewell, may we continue to the now distant ship that is carrying him out to the sea of eternity. May each glance in that direction give us more determination to live our lives fruitfully, to live them well. Be it resolved, as we express sympathy to the family, we submissively commit David's spirit into the hands of an all-wise God, as we commit the family to the love and compassion of a sympathetic Savior. We resolve a copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy placed in our church files. Resolve this 29th day of May, 2021, by order of the pastor. Lovingly submitted, St. Anselm and St. Elizabeth Catholic Church. Father Robert J. Kelly, SVD, pastor. Regina is giving a, the resolution to Leslie and her family, and I'm asking Paris Washington, our choir director, and also a member of the parish council to give him a remembrance of prayer in seven masses for the next 10 years. I ask Father Tracy and uh, Father Mark to please join me up here in Deacon Ivan. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of the house of worship. May our farewell express our affection for our brother David. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day, one day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest granted unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother David in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on David in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn us to listen to our prayer, turn and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. Help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother David forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and all the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Our service funeral mass and visitation of David has completed now. The church has some soda water available right outside this door. There are individual cake slices in plastic that you can take with you today uh, and it'll be served right outside this door so if you leave through the middle aisle and go out that door you can receive the cake slices okay there's a plastic container that they'll be put in or you could eat it there with a fork we just ask you to stay socially distant from everybody but we can do that outside. We cannot do it in our church hall. So anyone who wouldn't like us, cake slice can lead by either side door in the rear of the church. The ushers will direct you, but if you would like to stay around and get a bottled water or a can of soda, uh, you're welcome to do it right outside this door. So we ask you to follow the directions on the floor of the church. You can leave through the middle aisle, and then we're going to process out. Jesus, remember me when you 
come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom.